Count your carbohydrates. Look at the label and count how many carbohydrates you're actually consuming per meal. Even if you decide you're not quite sure about low carb, make sure you keep tabs on an estimate of how many carbohydrates per meal you're intaking. That may explain why you're not seeing the results as fast as you are on the current diet. That know you're on. what's in the food that you're putting in your body. Just like you want to know what's on the designer label of the clothing that you're purchasing, where certain items are made, you know, you should know what's going in your body. That's the most important label to read. You are not depriving yourself at any time. If anyone tells you, girl, I can't do all that. I can't be measuring my food. I can't be looking at no labels. I'm not trying to do all that. I'm not going to be depriving myself. You're not depriving yourself. Just like you're not depriving yourself when you go to a Nordstrom and you can't afford a $180 pair of shoes because that doesn't fit into your lifestyle, into your budget. If you cannot afford to continue to eat ice cream, drink soda, drink, do, eat whatever it is that you want to because you're tipping the scale, because you feel unhealthy from the inside out, because you look unhealthy, then it is the same concept. This is your life. You know, this is a different part of your life because it's not about your wallet, your, you know, your financial budget, but this is your body's budget. This is your health. And if you don't learn to control now or, you know, have some type of control now on what you put in your body, then, you know, it, it kind of affects everything else in life, you know? So just keep that in mind when someone else tries to discredit you counting your carbs or, you know, protein grams or dietary fiber that you at no time are depriving yourself. Cook. If you don't cook, learn how to cook. Cooking is about following instructions. Just like you may not have, have known how to actually do your job, the job that you're on now, you were probably trained and it looked foreign to you when you first sat down to do that job the first day that you were given your first task. Same thing with cooking. If you don't know how to cook, learn how to cook. This is about survival. This is about feeling good inside. This is about changing the way you eat now because eventually down the road when you're older, when, you know, those pads in your vertebra and your kneecaps and your elbows and your ankles, you know, aren't as new and cushiony and strong as they are right now when you're young, you know, that you've learned how to control the way you eat now so that when you can't work out as hard as you're working out now to keep the weight off or to lose the weight, you know, you have a fighting chance when your metabolism slows down as well. Also remember to multiply your total carbohydrates by your serving size. So if you have two or three times the serving, then you also need to make sure you multiply that. So how do you know if you're, you know, eating the right serving size? Until you learn, you may want to measure. And for people who say they don't want to have to do all of that, well then keep doing the same thing and you'll keep getting the same results. This is about a lifestyle change. Once you learn, your diet, then you won't actually have to measure it anymore. Just like there's a recipe out there that you make all of the time and you look at the measuring cup, you don't have to physically measure it out. You pour it in the cup and you throw it in the pot and it's, it's second nature to you. But while you're learning your diet, your new lifestyle change, you want to measure because that will help you for the future. Once you learn it, you don't have to continue to stay by the book so strict. But in the beginning, it is important that you actually know what your serving sizes are because you don't want to cheat yourself. Doesn't mean that you have to stop eating or consuming once you've gotten to that measurement, but you want to be aware of what you're intaking, and the only way to do that is to know how much you're actually intaking by measuring it. Remember, there's approximately 3,500 calories and one pound of fat. So what does that mean for you? That means for you, as long as you use working out as a measure for your sole weight loss, your sole weight loss purposes, then you will basically have to work out that much more than what you actually eat to burn whatever is stored on your body. So if you have 35 pounds of fat on your body that you want to lose, then you are going to have to, and you're continuing to gain weight, meaning that whatever you're currently eating, you always find yourself 
five pounds bigger than you were the year before at the end of the year or at the end of six months or 10 pounds bigger at the end of the year than you were last year, that means your current diet is causing you to gain weight. So working out is probably going to cause you to stay the same. It's not really going to burn the fat that is stored on your body because it takes a lot of cardio to actually burn stored fat. You want to use your normal movements, your day-to-day -day movements, the day-to-day -day energy that's necessary to just pick your body up to lose the fat that's stored on your body. A lot of people will say, well, there are lots of foods that are low in fat but very high in carbohydrates, and low fat does work. Low fat has worked for lots of people. Low fat, low calorie, and high cardio. Now, low fat, low calorie, and high cardio does work. But this diet is for people who realistically are not going to eat foods that are low in fat for a long periods of time and do not see themselves going to the gym on the regular and having high impact cardio diet now or high high impact high cardio workout. Now, if your problem is five or ten pounds, then you know low fat, low calorie, and if you love going to the gym, that may work for you, you know. But if you are yo-yoing, if you, you know, have more than 10 pounds that you want to get away from or that you want to get rid of and you don't see yourself realistically going to the gym on the regular pretty much for the rest of your life or for the next 30 years, then this is something you really want to try. This is for people who have tried low calorie, low fat, and failed because the food really just doesn't taste that good. Fat tastes good, you know? Fat sends hormones to the brain that sends these pleasure stimulants to the brain that just makes you like, oh, you know, just fall in love with, with, with the, the dish in front of you. And you shouldn't have to give that up. But there's certain foods that just should be forbidden because um, you know, your brain becomes addicted to them and they mess up everything else that you put in your body. It's almost like it goes out of whack, you know, and I'm again, not a doctor or a scientist. And to try to explain exactly how it does that, I'd be sitting here forever. So the best thing to do is to pick up the Atkins diet, pick up a low carb magazine, read a few blogs, information on how the body actually metabolizes carbohydrates, how the body actually stores fat, how sugar and insulin is, how does it play a part in your body storing fat, and it will give you a better explanation of what's actually happening when you eat certain foods. Remember, you can have carbs, but eat them sparingly. Eat the ones that you really, really, really enjoy. If food no longer really tastes good to you, then it's probably because you overindulge on certain things and, you know, you're taking them for granted. You'd be surprised when you don't consume certain foods for a long period of time, how good they actually taste. Food really tastes very, very good to me now. And it's because even if I'm really hungry, if there's something around that if there's an option around that doesn't fit into my lifestyle my body for some reason tends to decide hey even though we're hungry we'll wait and when I get to the food that is healthier for me or that I really am wanting it tastes so good and a lot of people are missing that they're just eating food because it's that time of the day that's what was available that's what was quick and easy and you are really missing out there's so many pleasure sensors on your tongue that trigger these hormones in your brain that you're probably missing out on because you're eating all the wrong food. Don't drink your carbs. It is very, very, very hard to lose weight on this diet if you continue to drink your carbohydrates because they're empty carbs. You are still going to be hungry after you drink your carbs and you basically are consuming two meals at the same time, sitting down at the table when you have a tall glass of anything basically colored that doesn't have some type of artificial sweetener. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, that's very hard. What do you drink? 
I battle with this with family and friends and loved ones that are close to me that remember me being thicker, that look at me and say, how in the world are you? do you manage to you know, keep a waistline that small? And I tell them all the time, I don't drink my carbs. Even if I go crazy that week and I had a bag of Doritos and a whole 12 pack of individual Reese's Pieces buttercups and I had peanut butter cookies and all kinds of stuff that is not really, really good for me because maybe for some reason that week my body said, hey, look, we need more carbs. We need more saturated fats because your body will do that. And there's just sometimes you're just going to give in to that. But guess what? No time am I consuming my carbohydrates through liquids because after I eat those snacks, I don't tend to continue to want more and more and more because they're filling, you know? I mean, it's something on my stomach versus a juice or a drink that is going to continue to leave you even thirstier. And some even say they make you more hungry and more thirsty when you consume very high, you know, high in sugar juices and drinks. So at no time, please do not drink your carbohydrates. It Rule of thumb, drink water, you know, drink milk, which does have sugar in it, but it is much lower than drinking a Coca-Cola or any type of juice product on the market. Find an alternative sweetener, find something that's sugar-free, find water, find tea. Um, it may get boring and bland, but I don't know, I've heard someone say it before, nothing tastes as good as being in shape looks.